Hi guys. Well, now that it's an hour before sunset, it is finally getting to be a spectacularly gorgeous day here. In the collapse of everything here at uh, Bugs and My Dog Farm. This little maggot infested dog. Uh, it is now a glorious early fall of 2023 evening. That would be, is it already Tuesday? Tuesday, September 26, 2023, and I want to wish a happy 103rd birthday to my late great mama, Elaine Mitchell, wherever she is. Happy birthday, mom. But anyway, uh, we're going to step a little bit out on a limb and do something a little bit different here at Collapse Chronicles today. Uh, I don't know if we've ever talked directly about this subject. You know, there, there's some things, you know, when you, when you start to do a rant and you understand that you might have some unpopular opinions and we don't want to upset anybody. Okay, that is the number one goal is do not upset anybody with your opinion. But I guess I am already on the record <coughs> advocating and cheerleading the extinction of the human race. And uh, of course, I, for some reason, I'm still advocating doing that through uh, not breeding, for instance. Uh, but at, at some point, as we move on through the collapse, we've got to start thinking about Soylent Green. And it just as a global society, we, we've just got to start looking around and we got, you know, find some sort of useless eaters on this planet that we pretty much all can agree uh, that, that they can go bye-bye and it would not be a bad thing. There are some people on this planet who are better off dead. Now, I'm not going deeply into the Doomer Onion. I understand from the perspective of the planet and every other Earthling on the planet <coughs> that we share the planet with that this planet would be better off without humans. That every human on the planet needs to go, you know, starting with those blue meanie billionaires and working our way down. Uh, I, I, I'm not over there in that part of the onion. I am over in the, uh, in the shallow end, what I call the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool. And, you know, just looking at all of the, the uh, early stages of societal collapse and uh, the first line of people uh, who obviously are not going to make the cut. And we, we, we've got to be honest, at some point we can't save everybody. Okay? Can't save everybody. So let's try to find some common ground. So this article coming from us from Fox News, I think a pretty objective article from uh, Fox News is it, it, particularly the comments at the end of the article. We're going to read some of the comments, but let's read the article itself first. Uh, we're going to go out to San Francisco. Fox News is taking us to the streets of San Francisco where we are finding a zombie apocalypse zombie apocalypse San Francisco on track to crush overdose death record 
as addicts die in streets. And of course, this is not just San Francisco, you know, as one <coughs> resident of uh, Philadelphia, I believe, was remarking in the comments that San Francisco doesn't hold a candle to Philadelphia if you want to see a, a true zombie apocalypse right here on the streets of American cities. And this is probably true in pretty much any uh, American city and more and more, you know, out in Appalachia and everywhere else. And uh, as the, you know, as, as it goes down, uh, there's going to be, you know, there has to be the first wave of people uh, going down in the collapse of society, and these are the zombies. Anyway, take it away, Fox News. <clears throat> San Francisco and Philadelphia uh, is poised to surpass a record-breaking year for overdose deaths. There were 563 overdose fatalities in the Golden City between January 1st and August 31st, according to a recent report from the San Francisco Chief Medical Examiner. This puts the city on track to hit 845 overdose fatalities in 2023. The San Francisco Chronicle reported far surpassing the record 725 in 2020. And, uh, of course, they have a, a picture of the streets of San Francisco. I was just talking to a buddy of mine who I used to travel to San Francisco with. We would go hang out in the Tenderloin Back in, uh, and back in the 1980s, we would go up and rent a room in the Tenderloin and hang out. And according to my friend, who was just out there uh, in, in San Francisco, he said it looked to him pretty much like it did in the 1980s. That is his firsthand report that he doesn't know what Fox News is talking about. Uh, but anyway, you be your own judge. Okay, this is Tom Wolf, a former drug user and current recovery advocate. <clears throat> Quote, there is so much fentanyl that it has contaminated other drugs sold on the street like meth and crack cocaine. It's in everything. Close quote. Wolf said the surge in overdoses is because the amount of fentanyl on the streets has increased threefold compared to 2020. And it just as a comment uh, that I guess means nothing, I have no more idea how to find fentanyl. It, it, so, someone could give me $100,000, tell me to go get them some fentanyl and keep the change, and I would say keep your $100,000. I, I have never met anybody that eats fentanyl, that takes drugs with fentanyl in it, I don't know what, I, I've heard about this stuff for years. I have never met anyone who's ever ingested fentanyl in my entire life. And as I say, would have no idea how to get some. But if anybody has an idea where to get some, uh, I would like to hear because I would like to have some, you, you know, in my ultimate bug out bag. Anyway, let's get back to Fox News, getting back to uh, Mr. Wolf. I see suffering and despair on many blocks. There are literally thousands of people 
in tents on the street who were almost all using meth and fentanyl, close quote. <clears throat> Out of the 563 overdose deaths in San Francisco this year, 456 involved fentanyl, according to, to the data from the medical examiner's office. August and January were the deadliest months this year with 84 overdose, overdose deaths each, averaging nearly three overdose deaths per day. And mean, in 2017, meanwhile, just 36 of the 222 overdose deaths involved fentanyl, according to the city's uh, Department of Public Health. This is Georgia Taylor, a 32-year-old fentanyl user. Quote, It's crazy. So sad out there. It's like a zombie apocalypse. I've been clean before, and I so, so want to get clean again before I overdose and die. But it's so hard. Close quote. Uh, added Taylor, who began using the synthetic opioid after losing her kids to Child Protective Services, quote, you can find 100 people out here who have 100 different reasons for using, and we all have to be ready to quit before it will work. Hmm. A local dealer told the Chronicle that drug addicts were free to make their own decisions, quoting a local fentanyl dealer. Quote, I don't give a fuck about the overdoses, a middle-aged dealer told a Chronicle reporter while handing fentanyl to a woman for $10. <clears throat> Quote, you make your choice to put that shit into your mouth. That's your business. I need to make my money. Close quote. There you go. <clears throat> Will Kurtek, a fentanyl user himself, saved a user's life last week after noticing him sprawled on the sidewalk. Somebody help! Bring some Narcan! Kurtek yelled before giving the overdosing user chest compressions. He told the Chronicle that was the fourth person he had saved over a week and a half. Uh, increased police intervention will help combat the overdose epidemic, Wolf told Fox News. Yeah, right. Increase police intervention. <clears throat> uh, said Wolf, fentanyl changed the game and has turned all public health approaches on its head. It is going to require the city to start making hard choices of what to do, which includes more enforcement, intervention, and mandated dated treatment for those breaking the law to support their addiction, close quote, uh, to support their addiction, enforcement must now be part of the solution in order to save lives. He added, neither Mayor London Breed's office nor the San Francisco Department of Public Health responded to a request for comment. And uh, so no, yesterday, you know, when I was talking about, uh, you know, that article that Paul Ehrlich and Gerardo Ceballo just came out with talking about basically how every, that humans are going to kill every other one of our living every one of our fellow earthlings we share the planet with over the next few decades, 11 comments 
Well, this article, uh, having 5,653 comments, and, <clears throat> you know, while I was reading this article, and this one, and, and how many more like it, and watching a lot of those interviews, you know, on soft white underbelly of those completely, just hopeless people. You know, I'm guiltily thinking to myself, you know, like, am I the only person reading this who's not going to lose any sleep over these 500, 700 uh, drug addicts dropping dead of drug overdoses on the streets of San Francisco or Philadelphia or wherever. You know, I'm, I'm with that drug dealer. It's their choice to put this shit in their mouth. They're, they're grown-ups. Uh, and, 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 and uh, it, it, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking, it, it seems to me like the, uh, the, the, the drug problem here is Narcan. I mean, wh what, what's the point uh, of what is the, the, the possible point of, of saving these miserable people's lives? They, uh, that they, they have nothing to live for. Uh, they, their, their lives are just absolutely dead and miserable, pathetic lives. Uh, they are, they're, they're just a, again, guys, you do understand I'm swimming around in the shallow end of the doomsday prophecy pool. Uh, it, it's, I, I, I it, it's just like wherever you are on the spectrum, how, you know, can you look at these people and, and, uh, and, and, and think, that keeping them alive is good for them or for anybody else. They are uh, the epitome of the useless eater. You've probably heard that term, the useless eater. Uh, they, they are <clears throat> adding nothing on any level uh, to society, they are, they are nothing but, uh, they're nothing but uh, a danger to themselves, to other people, uh, they, they just, they're, they're, they're just a drag, they're better off dead, uh, the quickest way to, to fix the problem is to ban Narcan. You know, hand out free fentanyl pills. I wish someone would hand me a free fentanyl pill when I've had enough. Uh, so anyway, I, 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 I'm thinking, you know, I'm feeling a little bit guilty about having these thoughts, but they're honest thoughts. The, the, these people, these 500 people are better off dead. The city of San Francisco is better off without them. The planet is better off without them. They are finally, they found some peace in their lives. And uh, maybe because it was on Fox News, I don't know. Um, and I... And uh, I, I start reading the the comments, and guess what? Uh, they they're, they're sounding and the, the, more and more like what I was thinking. Here is Trey reviving people. Sounds like a worthy deed. The problem is these individuals use their second chances not to get clean and be better people, but to con continue committing crimes, causing blight, and getting the next generation of people addicted. It's sad to say, but it might be better not to intervene. 280 thumbs up. Uh, then a lot of people... 
talking about, uh, you, you know, just about how San how these people have completely destroyed San Francisco. You know, visiting San Francisco is just is that that people are boycotting going there. Uh, <clears throat> here is <coughs> Simone. Whatever happened to free will? Everyone gets to choose how they use their life so long as it doesn't harm others. All these users are on a mission to leave this life, but we keep getting in their way with Narcan. Can you imagine their disappointment each time they are brought back? And for what? So they can suffer in this life some more? Why are we so cruel? 429 thumbs up. Make that 430 thumbs up. Uh, I never thought I would find such reasonable, intelligent commentary to a Fox News, uh, <clears throat> article. Uh, okay. Here's one with 261 thumbs up from Wendy Jane. Living in tents on the sidewalk and committing crimes in order to get enough money for their next high. Exactly what good purpose do these people serve? Last time I was in San Francisco, I saw them openly defecating in the streets and screaming threats at people to give them money. If the government won't force them into shelters or institutions, then the best option is for them to be removed from the world. They obviously don't care if they live or die. <clears throat> Drug addiction is really a slow suicide. 261 thumbs up. Okay, now Chomby only has uh, only has eighty five thumbs up. What does Chomby have to say? <clears throat> Letting these drug addicted homeless live in Rome and shoot up around the drug infested streets is not compassion towards these people. It is turning out to be more of a death sentence for them. Uh, the government and police really lost control of the situation these past few years, and they wonder why there is a mass exodus of people in business from the city. Okay, I like this one with 242. Uh, all right, finally, Diane S. I do not believe it. Diane S. And notice that the Yahoo News community not pulling down any of these comments. The Yahoo community totally fine with these comments. Diane, I have a really weird solution to the drug problem. Give them all the drugs they want for free on two conditions. First, surrender parental rights to any children they happen to have. And second, male or female, submit to sterilization. Hallelujah. You go, girl. Diane S. The addict is probably beyond hope, and this would eliminate the need for them to commit crime to obtain drugs. The drug dealers would be out of business. 243 thumbs up. Uh,
And then Al added to that three conditions, sign a DNR so when they OD, people don't waste time and resources saving them. 106 thumbs up. You know, and, and this question has always been on my mind. I good for Brian. I honestly uh, have, uh, have wondered the, about this question frequently. Does anybody know the answer to this question? To add to for me and Brian, I'm not a drug user, so excuse my naivete. But what is the purpose of lacing all of these drugs with fentanyl? Are dealers trying to kill their customers? Yes. Uh, let's see. I think we get it. Then uh, we get into this whole thing uh, about Philadelphia, uh, which, according to this guy, Lost 1,276 people, like two and a half times San Francisco. Uh, here is an observer. It's difficult to help or even feel sorry for those who are determined to destroy themselves. Here is JC. The problem will go away faster if they stop using Narcan. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and then, of course, sunny. And yet, nothing will be done. Uh... Anyway, we could go on. Uh, if addicts die because of overdose, it reduces the number of drug users. And there you go. It helps to solve the illegal drug business. And we're just going to end with Daryl N., which is kind of uh, pretty much where I'm leaving this. I have compassion fatigue for drug users. You made your choice. You accept the risks. Personal responsibility. Anyway, guys. We gotta start somewhere. And I think the zombie apocalypse on the streets of San Francisco is a good a place as any to start the uh, Soylent Green <clears throat> movement. Speaking of Soylent Green, little dog, are you ready for your dinner? We're cooking you some long pork in the, in the uh, crock pot. So, you know, I, I cook... Uh, I cook Sancho uh, dinner because it's cheaper to buy human food and cook it than it is dog food. Human food is cheaper. So I, they were sold out of chicken, so the little dog is getting uh, some pork chops for dinner. We found some uh, in this big pile of perfectly good-looking pork chops. I'm, I'm hoping they're pork chops and not long pork chops. Uh, half off. What did we pay, little dog? $1.75 a pound for these beautiful pork chops. So we're going to go have some, uh, is it short pork or long pork for the little dog? I would say get out there and enjoy your short pork before long pork is the only thing on the menu, starting with the zombie apocalypse in San Francisco. Bye, guys.